Hey everybody, um, I wanted to start, we're going to go into 16.8 today, which is on what's called Stokes' Theorem. And um, I just want to remind you of something we talked about in 16.5, where we introduced the ideas of curl and divergence. Uh, and I was trying to kind of motivate what they, what they compute, but at some point toward the end of that lecture, we had taken Green's Theorem, and I had... Um, done a little um, kind of reworking of Green's theorem into what I call the two-dimensional version of Stokes' theorem. Okay, and uh, I'm just going to copy this, uh, and uh, the point of doing it then was to say uh, that, you know, this works in three dimensions as well, and we'll use it. Um, okay, so... We're going into 16.8. This is Stokes' theorem. Okay, and what I'll do is I think I'll just paste in what we had done, um, I think, in 16.5. Um, maybe update a few things um, so here's my surface I'm going to turn this into a surface integral basically okay so instead of integrating over a region in the xy plane which is a surface um, we're going to integrate over s so let's get rid of R here and change it to S. Okay. And when we integrate over surfaces, instead of using dA um, as a, a, a vector differential for area in the xy plane, uh, we should change this to dS, the vector differential for area on a surface. It just it just computes differential area, but as a vector it's normal to the surface. So I'm going to change the dA to its equivalent in three dimensions, ds. Okay. And um, Stokes, theorem, Stokes' theorem really is Green's theorem, and without going into a lot of detail on this, you think of Stokes' theorem as being in the plane, uh, and and this statement is true in the plane, but um, you know when when we look at curved surfaces, and that's really the only difference here is that our surface is now curved. Um, simply, uh, the we we to prove Stokes' theorem, all you have to do is look at very small regions of this surface. As long as the surface is smooth. And that'll be those will be the requirements I'm about to write um, for this theorem. As long as the sur surface is smooth and continuous, uh, if you get in close enough, every surface looks like a plane um, locally, and that is the crux of the proof. Because the surface looks like a plane locally, Green's theorem applies, and Green's theorem really, um, as we talked about, is effectively Stokes' theorem. Uh, and that's why I demonstrated that when we covered, uh, uh, well, after Green's theorem. Okay, so um, all, all this here to say um, the requirement, a couple of things, um, is uh, that this assumes um, all components of the field Um, have continuous partial derivatives. Um, in an open region Containing our surface. Okay. 
Okay, so that's the requirement for this. Um, a couple of other conventions. Um, basically, um, we need to have sort of a right-hand rule on our normal vector. So let me, um, I'm going to move this up a little higher here and maybe rotate it a skosh like that I think will work okay so what I want is um, the normal has to be your thumb <laughs> and the um, surface I don't know if you remember but Green's theorem required a clockwise orientation on our curve so um, we're still going to sort of require that but the <laughs> Um, clockwise kind of depends on what side of the clock you're looking at so um, we have to have sort of what uh, a sense of what is up on this surface um, so that we can decide what direction around the curve on the outside edge of the surface the curve will be called C um, so that what direction that curve has to be oriented remember um, line integrals always have directions associated with them okay and basically, uh, let's um, put a couple more uh, statements here. Because um, we can add some to this. Um, first of all, this first integral is a work integral. So this is the work um, done by F, the field F, um, to move a particle around a closed loop. Sorry about this. Oops, a particle. <laughs> okay. Um, and this thing over here is a, is a flux integral. This is the flux of the curl of F. Okay. And, it, and we talked about how um, if there's no curl in a field, then you have to, you have to remember... Um, just to kind of recall, if curl of F is not zero, then um, F is not conservative. That's a, a kind of a, a test for conservative that we proved. Okay, so. Um, it's the conservative, it's the non-conservative fields that have a curl to them. They, they swirl around, and it's those fields which are, which are able to do work, to move things around in these closed loops. Okay. And so this tells us, um, you know, basically, it's the non-conservative fields that are able to do this kind of work. Okay. Now, what I want to do uh, by way of example is just to show how Stokes' theorem is true um, on an integral. Okay, so let's just what I want to do is just evaluate both sides of of this theorem, and uh, we'll show that this works. So here's my field. Oh, and I forgot to say um, there's a right hand rule. I think I meant to say it. Um, but let's go ahead and do our right-hand rule here. So I'm going to draw a bunch of um, ugly fingers here. Let's just have three ugly fingers. Okay, and um, then a thumb on the hand. <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay, so 
right hand rule. That's that's what your right. That's not a left hand. This is a right hand. So the right hand rule. Um, gives the orientation for C. Okay, so DS is the thumb. Got it? <laughs> and the uh, orientation for your curve has to go around where your fingers are pointing. Okay, so let me uh, go back to my example here. So we've got a little field F. And here are the components. Negative 2YZ. Uh, y. 3X. Okay. Um... We need a surface, so the surface is going to be z equals 5 minus x squared minus y squared. Um, where, um, and let's, say, let's just say z is greater than or equal to 1. Okay. So we can sketch that real quick. Actually, I don't think it went low enough, so I'm going to go a little lower here. Okay, so right in the middle of that is where z is 1. Okay, and then a coordinate system down here. Like that. Um, we're going to need to figure out the curve here. so. Uh, regardless, um, this is our surface S. Okay, um, we want to do an upward normal on S, so this has to be given in the problem. Normally, normally, um, this this you know it doesn't really matter. It's your decision whether you want to do an upward normal or a downward normal. And I would say if it's a fluid flow, normally you want your norm normally you want your normal to point the direction in the direction of the fluid flow and that way the flux comes out positive um, if the if the normal points in the opposite direction of fluid flow then the flux will come out negative which is not the end of the world okay. any questions All right. so we have to put an orientation on our curve here so um, because we're having an upward normal, I guess I can put my DS like this. And with an upward normal, the orientation with the right hand rule, I'm putting um, direction on my curve for the orientation. And again, the curve is C here on that outer boundary. Okay. Um, and this is um, this curve here, the C curve. Um, is where um, z equals 1. Um, so you would do 1 equals 5 minus x squared minus y squared. So that's, uh, I think that's x squared plus y squared equals 4. So that's a circle of radius 2. So you can say um, C is parameterized by a, a vector curve R of T. Is it's a, it's a circle of radius two, so we'll do two cos T. Um, two sine T. Okay, and then again we're going to do both sides of Stokes theorem. So Stokes theorem has an f dot dr, so I have to do dr as well. And just to remind you, dr um, is r prime of t dt, like that. 
So here you'll have um, negative 2 sine t and then a 2 cos t times dt. Okay, so no big deal. So we're all set to do f dot dr. Um, at some point I'm going to need the curl, but let's do that in the second part. So I think I'll just box all of this off. So um, here comes the left side of Stokes' theorem. It's just the uh, integral along the curve C of f dot dr. So you're just computing the work that's being done by this field. Okay, so here we go. Now, um, when we refer to x, ooh, hang on, y'all. A little bit of a mistake in my r of t. I've got an x coordinate, a y coordinate, but I did not put in a z coordinate. Notice um, we are on a circle, but there is a z coordinate of 1 everywhere on that circle, so I'm going to put that in there. And so I guess then my dr gets a 0 in the z-coordinate. Look at that. Okay. So then, here we go. Oh, and by the way, when uh, when this uh, integral refers to x, y, and z, I'll be substituting for x, 2 cos t, for y, 2 sine t, and then, of course, for z, 1. Okay? So here we go. So this thing says two, negative 2yz, two so it'll be negative 2, y is 2 sine t, z is 1. Okay, now another y, so a 2 sine t, and then um, a 3x, which will be 6 cos t. Okay, like that. Um, here, we're going to have to have t go from 0 to 2 pi because we're going to do a closed loop. And then I'm going to try and squeeze in the rest of, of the dr here. Okay. So dr... <laughs> had a negative 2 sine t, 2 cos t. And then a 0 dt. Let me s do a little more squeezing. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that dot product. Okay. 
Okay, so I've got that negative 4 sine t times a negative 2 sine t, so I think that's going to be an 8 sine squared t. Um, now a plus, multiplying the y components, 2 sine times 2 cosine, so that'll be 4 sine t cos t. And plus 0. Okay. And once again, um, you know, you I think you know, you know, the these integrals um, involve just basic uh, calculus. Um, the sine squared t uh, b ends up being a um, one minus cos of two t over two. That's how you do that one. And that simplifies in the 4 sine t cos t. This is uh, 2 sine of 2t. Uh, like that, dt. And so th in that form, the integral is quite doable. And I'm not going to... Um, go any further. I'm just going to give you the value of this. This comes out to be 8 pi. Okay, now we have to do the right side of Stokes, and then we should be able to show that this comes out as 8 pi as well. Okay. Okay, so before we do the right side of Stokes' theorem, um, which involves a ds differential, okay, so, um, so let's do ds real quick here. And just as a reminder, um, when uh, this is something we did before, but when z is equal to some function of x and y, um, we had two forms for ds. Um, it was either negative fx, negative fy, 1 dA, or that's the um, upward normal. Okay, or um, ds, you just reverse the sign, so you would do positive fx, fy, and then a negative one with a negative z component, that must point downward. Okay, and again, so you have to decide, and, and that this has got to be given in the instructions so that we're all doing the same thing. So here we're going to do the upward normal negative fx, negative fy, uh, 1 dA, like that. Okay, and then um, referring to f, it's 5 minus, you know, the, this expression for our surface, this is our f of xy. Okay. And the surface. So it's 5 minus x squared minus y squared. So fx Okay. So um, negative fx would be 2x, I think. And the negative fy looks like it's going to be 2y. And then the 1, and then the da. Okay, so that's ds. And that's easy enough. But then we have to do the curl of the field. So that's the next part. So the cur and let's, let's copy the field down here because it feels like it's been a while since I saw that. Oops. So here's my field. And I'm going to paste it down here and do the curl. Okay, so remember this is del uh, curl.
across f. So um, it's a determinant. Del is the vector of partial differential operators. The snobs don't call it del, they call it nobla. There we go. Okay, and then the components are negative 2yz, uh, y, and 3x, and then the ijks go in the top row. I always do that last. And there we go. So, here comes i... And we do this. That looks like zero to me. So you're going to do the partial of 3x with respect to y. That's zero. Partial of y with respect to z. That's zero. So here the i components is zero. Like that. Oops. We'll do a minus the j component now. It's the messiest one. I'll just cross all the way across this way. Okay, so here... Um, you're doing the derivative of the partial of 3x with respect to x. That will be 3. And um, minus the partial of negative 2yz with respect to y. So that would be, sorry, with respect to z, which is negative 2y. So you got a double negative. This becomes plus 2y. Like that. And then the k components... Um, so we're going this way. I do see the partial of y with respect to x, that's 0. And then a double negative minus um, the negative partial with respect to y of negative 2yz, which I think is going to be just uh, 2z. So this will be, um, I think the whole thing is just 2z. I'm going to think that through again. So let's go ahead and put this as uh, an angle bracket form. So we're going to have 0, uh, negative 3 minus 2i, and 2z. So that's the curl of our vector. Okay. Now um, we're doing um, the curl of f dot ds. So um, let's do that first. Curl f dot ds all right well um, 0 negative 3 minus 2i and 2z dotted with ds which was 2x 2y 1 da Okay, and so this comes out um, as um, negative 3y minus 4y squared. Hang on. I think it'll be negative 6y. So negative 3 times 2y is negative 6y, and negative 2y times 2y is minus 4y squared. And then plus 2z times 1, so it's just plus 2z, like that. And you get the dA out there, like that. Okay, and so now we do our double integral over um, our surface of curl f. Oops. Uh, ds. Okay, and I just want to make sure we can set this up. And once the integral is completely set up with limits, then I'll just give you the value of it. Okay, 
So this is a double integral, curl f dot ds we already did. This is uh, negative 6y minus 4y squared uh, plus 2z here, and that'll be dA. Now this is actually no good. I'm going to go ahead and put my s down here. Um, z, you're going to have to remember, is... Uh, I think it was 5 minus x squared minus y squared. So you got to put that in. You can't have a z. Uh, you can't have three variables in a double integral. Okay, and dA, remember, is dy dx. So you can't have a z in there. Okay. So, um, step at a time here, we've got a double integral. Um, we'll put in the integrand, it's negative 6y minus 4y squared um, plus 2z, um, that which is 5 minus x squared minus y squared, like that, and then a dA. Isn't that lovely? over our surface still. Uh, this is not good. I think some of it can clean up because I see the, the negative 2y squared and the negative 4y squared. So let's write it one more time as a negative 6y. We've got the negative 4y squared and the negative 2y squared so it'll be minus 6y squared. Um, I think it's minus 2x squared and then plus 10. DA, like that. Okay. Uh, now, it's probably time to um, because we're integrating dA at this point, we probably should say we're integrating over a region in the xy plane. So let me just show, show you what's going on here. We've already talked a little bit about it. Um, we've got um, this paraboloid here that's like that. And we talked about how this is a circle. <laughs> I love that. I guess let me try that separately. Fascinating. Okay, so I'm going to sort of attach that, maybe squish it a bit. That'll work. Okay, I'm going to kind of shade in on this a bit. Or at least um, make that back line dotted. Okay, so there's my ellipsoid. And remember, this is at a height of z equals 1. So right here is z equals 1. And um, so let's get our z-axis going through there. Okay, x, y. And then what we've got... Um, is the shadow of this has to be cast down into the xy plane so I have to do another ellipse here same <laughs> same ellipse so let me try that again that's better so I'm centering this underneath let me shrink it down a bit here get it to be the right size How's that? Close enough. So this is a region actually in the xy plane that we're integrating over. So I would like to name that because once you are just doing x and y, here you're in the xy plane. And that's where my integral is. So when we were talking about the surface integral and integrating over the surface, you know, with x's, y's, and z's, but at some point, um, when you put limits for x and y in, you're integrating over r. 
down there in the XY plane, so I kind of feel like I should have been putting R's in here. Okay, once you're, once you're in the plane, then you're not on the surface anymore. Okay. And I don't want to integrate over a circle in rectangular coordinates, so probably going to have to switch this to polar, so it's going to be negative 6 r sine theta uh, minus 6 r squared sine squared theta minus 2 r squared cos squared theta uh, plus 10, and then outside is going to be an r dr d theta. It's a circle of radius 2, you may remember, so let me just kind of put dump that on there too. This is a radius of 2 here. Okay. So r would go from 0 to 2, and theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And all I can say is, trust me, that's horrible, right? Uh, it's just a homework problem, so these can get ugly. Trust me, I did the math. It comes out to be 8 pi. Okay, so, and we're just supposed to notice that was 8 pi. Um, when we did it before, as a line integral, we got 8 pi down here. So the line integral turned out to be exactly the same value as the surface integral. And that's what Stokes' theorem is telling us. Stokes' theorem says that the line integral along the curve that's effectively the boundary of my surface... Um, if we compute the work in that line integral, that's the same thing as if we had done the surface integral through the surface of the curl of the field. Um, like that. And when you dot it with ds, basically... Um, um, you're... you're <laughs> Excuse me, I have some rascals in my bedroom. Uh, you're finding that part of the curl that's normal to the surface as you do that. Okay. So this is a, this a verifies a Stokes theorem. Nothing like a proof, of course. Um, they both came out to be 8 pi. Okay, and that's that. I'm going to do one more quick problem. Um, okay, so what they want us to do is... Um, evaluate a line integral using Stokes' theorem. So we're supposed to evaluate the line integral along a, around a closed uh, loop. Um, some curve here um, using Stokes' theorem. Oops, f dot dr. <laughs> Okay, so um, here's the field. X plus Y square, comma, Y plus Z square, comma, Z plus X square. Hmm. Um, so curve C is going to be a triangle. Um, with vertices uh, 1, 0, 0, um, 0, 1, 0, and uh, 0, 0, 1.
uh, and back to to the starting one. Okay, so that's really easy. Um, and I'll give it an orientation here. Um, so let's go ahead and, and draw our curve real quick. Okay, so here's one, um, one zero zero down on the x-axis, zero one zero on the y-axis, and zero zero one on the z-axis. So we're just doing this this triangle here in space. Okay, and we started at one zero zero and then went two zero one zero. So the orientation's this way. So it, we give the order um, of the points to give the orientation on the curve. So that's your curve C. And then we're going to kind of imagine sort of an invisible surface inside of that. Like this, I guess. Because we're going we're gonna to evaluate this work integral using Stokes' theorem. And Stokes' theorem switches to a surface so inside I'm going to put a little s for the surface and they didn't give us a surface it's just a curve but one of the things you can think about with Stokes theorem is that you know when you start this this um, this integral here with a curl of f dot ds and you're in you're finding the flux of the curl of this field s f through the surface s turns out you can evaluate it with a line integral just around the boundary. So again, this is another statement that I was basically saying before, um, that the field, um, sorry, that the that this this flux integral is independent of the surface. It only depends on the boundary, which is sort of, if you think about it, that's sort of important. We're thinking about fluid flow um, across some... Uh, some surface, and we're just saying that the full, the total fluid flow um, for the curl of the field um, does not depend on the f the surface itself. Um, it only depends on the boundary. So it's sort of like um, it can get deformed. The, the 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 if this is a filter, it can get deformed, and you'll still have the same amount of fluid flow going through it no matter what the shape of the filter. Okay, so let's copy this um, expression here. And see if we can use it to compute the work. Okay, so here's our field. And this is how we're going to evaluate the work integral. So we're going to have to compute the curl of our field. Okay. Maybe I'll do this over here. So, um, curl of the field um, is is del cross the field. Okay. So this is, um, as you know, a three by three determinant with partial derivatives in the second row. Like that. Um, coordinates of the field in the third row. And the IJKs in the first row. Like that. Okay, so let's see if we can do that real quick. So this will be I times this determinant. So Partial of with respect to y of z plus x squared is zero. Partial of 
um, y plus z squared with respect to z would be 2z, so I think we're just going to have 0 minus 2z, okay, um, and then minus j, okay, so we're doing this diagonal, or that uh, multiplication, so partial with respect to x of z plus x squared is 2x, and so we'll put that 2x in. Um, and then the partial with respect to z of x plus y squared is 0. So that's going to go away. And then plus k. So this way. All right, so partial with respect to x of y plus z squared is 0. Partial with respect to y of x plus y squared. We're subtracting it, so you're going to get a negative 2y. That looks easy. So it's a negative 2z, negative 2x, and negative 2y. Easy enough. So that's a curl. Okay, now we need to do ds. Um, so here we go. We actually we can do ds without knowing the um, equation of that surface. Um, just to, maybe just to make life a little simpler for you, I'm going to show you something, um, that you can use anytime you like, um, and it's not hard to prove this, but, um, if this is, let's see, I'm going to do my, uh, three intercepts, so this is A over here, let's make Y, B, and Z, C up there. And um, we'll just connect these three intercepts like this. Okay. And we're doing this plane. I made a mistake. I wanted the z-coordinate to be c up there. Like that. Okay, so the plane, without going through a lot of trouble, if you know the, the uh, intercepts, x, y, and z for a plane, then you just do x over the x-intercept plus y over the y-intercept. Oops, y-intercept is b. Plus z over the z-intercept, that's c. Is that equal to 1? Turns out that's the equation of the plane. So that's easy. All right. So the plane they're asking us about up here is just going to be x, you know, the x, y, and z intercepts are all 1, so this is just x plus y plus z equals 1. Okay, so you could say z is uh, 1 minus x minus y. Okay. <clears throat> and so that when we do um, ds, which is what we need next, um, so where are we going to put this? How about in here, so ds, remember, um, I think it was supposed to have an upward normal. It, it does need to have an upward normal because of the orientation on the curve here. So think about the right-hand rule. If it's going around um, counterclockwise like this, you need your thumb pointing up. All right, so that's the right-hand rule. It's an upward normal. Okay. Let me, uh, I'm going to clean that picture up just a bit so that it saves well. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Um, so the upward normal for ds, um, I think, is um, negative fx, negative fy, and 1 da. Okay, so um, the, that's um, the F is the surface which we've got up here um, as Z equals 1 minus X minus Y. So let's, let's just maybe call it um, F of X, Y is 1 minus X minus Y. Oops, sorry about that. Okay. So when you do this, negative fx is negative 1, so you're just going to have 1. And we do negative fy, 
um, you get negative 1, so you have to take the negative of that. So you get positive 1 for negative Fy, and of course Z is 1 with an upward normal. So that's your um, BS, super easy. Okay, so I think we can start um, evaluating our integral. I'm going to shrink this down, just work things out a little better here. Okay, so um, double integral of the curl, which came out to be um, negative 2z minus 2x minus 2y. And then dot the ds, which is just 1, 1, 1 da. Okay, and now I'm going to be integrating over a region in the xy plane, because, well, I still have a z in here. So that was, <laughs> that sort of keeps me up on the surface for a second. Um, let's do the dot product here. Um, so... I'm not, I, I'm saying I'm still not really in the plane yet because there's a z coordinate. Okay, so I just kept this as being integrating over the surface still, and this is um, let's go ahead and do that dot product. I'll leave the surface down here, and so you're just going to have negative two z times one um, minus two x times one and minus two y times one, and that'll be d a. And then you want to remember that z is 1 minus x minus y. Okay, so maybe we make a note of that. On the surface, z is 1 minus x minus y. Okay, so... So you've got negative 2 times 1 minus x minus y minus 2x minus 2y. DA. And now I can, um, maybe we'll just go ahead and say dy dx, because we are now in the plane with no z-coordinates. Okay, and we're going to need to figure out um, what our region looks like in the xy plane, so I'll, I'll go ahead and draw this real quick. Remember, um, x is 1, y is 1 for the intercepts. So we're, um, we're going to integrate over this region R in the xy plane. Okay. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and combine this. Well, of course, this equation here is, I think it's y equals 1 minus x. Okay, so y would go from 0 to 1 minus x, and x is going to go from 0 to 1 for that region. Like that. So let's see if we can pound this out. Okay, so I'm going to have a negative 2. Looks like we have a 2x. And minus a 2x, does that cancel? So I think you end up just with a negative 2 in here, da. And, you know, what you could do is you could just look at this as a double integral. Uh, well, put the minus 2 out front. So minus 2 um, times the double integral over the region R of just dA. And so why not just say this is negative 2 times the area of R? And I think the area of R is, you know, this is just 1. That's 1. So area of r is a half times the base times the height. Okay, um, so of course that's a half times 1 times 1.
and so all all to say um, the area of R is just half. Okay. So I think we could just say um, this is negative two times a half. So the answer, the final answer, is just negative one. Okay. And that's it. I think uh, that's all we're going to do for 16.8, so good luck with that.